Hello, Goranges, here we are again, this time on view, coming up to be on view for our sale on the 24th of May. Blimey, where's the year going? And bank holidays have been kicking in, so there's a bit of a build up of goods. We've got a really interesting lot to show you. All sorts of curiosities. Uh, I start with lot 275. These are Egyptian wood figures. Question is, how old are they? Well, there's the rub. Difficult to know for sure. There's some old auction tickets on them. We think they may have been bought from a, uh, an antiquities sale uh, some time ago. Um, but there are so many sort of copies and reproductions that, that are, we, we've had our, been given our best opinion, but I think we're just calling them Egyptian style. They're lot 275. Modest estimate of 50 to 80, but keep your eye on them. From the same source, things such as uh, this uh, African beadwork bag. Look, it was bought in Stroud Auction Rooms in uh, 2014. So there we go, we've got some provenance for it. It comes with a sort of carved hardwood cup and a bronze lion dog, lot 278. We have some Clos de la Cue, uh, the bone red wine, lot 279. Five bottles there, estimate three to 500. We've got some African masks. We've got vintage desk fans. Look at that, a fabulous thing. Lot 313 in at 60 to 80 pounds. Uh, I like this, others don't, but I think it's a great one. Look, this sort of carved moon figure. Just this little plaque hang on the wall. Lot 288 in at 60 to 80. Dan likes this. This is uh, this nice little Buddha here. It's got a Bellman sticker on it. So sort of stuff from auction rooms all over the place coming in here. Lot two, not, not recently Bellman, so I hasten to add. Lot 264, it's in 80 to 120. But again, keep your eye on it. Might have a little more chance to go on. From the same garage in Hove came this sort of figure here, sort of Papua New Guinea look to it, perhaps carry in shit eye, inset eyes. Stroud auction rooms again, lot 258 this time. So, some interesting ethnographical items. I like these, these are lovely. Three, lot 316, spirit barrels. Look, beautifully done in stoneware. Sort of thing that Dalton were making, but other factories were at it too. Victorian examples, they are Dalton. Up the top it says Dalton Lambeth. There we go. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. Well, partially. Brandy, that one. And then the last one is uh, ever popular today, gin. So yeah, really nice condition. You, you can get the, the taps for these and the bungs and everything. Could actually use them, it'd be fun, wouldn't it? So, lot 316, two to 300, seems reasonable to me. A little bit of more crop there, lot 251. Nice little sort of leaf and berries pattern vase of some age, uh, just a 60 to 80 estimate. So now, behind the counter, a bit of a mess here. We, we're, not really, we're not on view properly till next week, so. Uh, it's sort of ready, but not ready, if you follow me. Anyway, a load of silver over the back here. I think about 70 odd lots Rogers uh, managed to find this, this week. Uh, and things such as this silver basket. Look at that. That's um, old sort of late Victorian Edwardian sort of date. Lot 704. Swing handle. Reasonable amount of weight, but not so much weight that you're going to be outbid by people who are just treating it as scrap. Estimate two to three hundred pounds. Down the end here, I find this. Something a bit different, lot 745. This is uh, enameled, technically white metal or perhaps silver. Does it have a hallmark? No, it doesn't have a hallmark. It is stamped Sterling 935. So technically higher standard than our, uh, our normal English silver at 925. Um, and then beautifully enameled with the rose. It's lot 745, estimate just 50 to 80. And another nice lot of silver caught my eye. This is lot uh, 736, Charles Boyton, the silversmith, who renowned for these rather stylish shapes. Use of ivory in the handles, please note. So, uh, you know, that's going to be banned in due course, but uh, at the moment still a uh, legal fare and um, very stylish. What some people are doing now is obviously taking these ivory ones off and having them recast in some sort of white plastic or whatever colour plastic they fancy really to, uh, to deal with that issue. Anyway, that's lot 736, 700 to 1,000 pounds. Now, fair bit of jewellery. We're going to be seeing quite a lot of jewellery over the next few sales, I'm told. So I thought we'd have a rummage in Roger's jewellery bin. Here, how about lot 859? Nice little diamond pendant necklace there. Estimate five to 800, that's lot 859. And then rings, there's all sorts of rings down in here, but we like the sort of, let's find something to show you against. Let's put them against this blue ground here. This is lot 795, just nine karat gold, but um, looks to be Victorian or very much in the Victorian style. Roger will have dated it if it has a hallmark to be able to do so. Just in at 80 to 120, quite a nice little antique ring. 
definitely older and all the rage at the moment morning rings morning jewelry is just making huge money whether it's preferably georgian but also victorian and uh, this is lot 819 in at 100 to 150 would would have had a hair work plaque in there i think it's now just silk fabric it's fully hallmarked up inside how good are my eyes not the best but i can see that it's fully hallmarked it's 18 karat gold and we've got an inscription inside um that my eyes aren't quite up to anymore tragic how ancient i'm getting but around about 1839 by the looks of things and uh, there we go that that's uh, no doubt going to be popular i'm seeing some watches in here as well lovely little look at this little fob watch a dinky little thing that is lot 824 with its original winding key you know in, in scale against the normal size fob watch there we are there's the difference so um we have lot 810 a nine carat gold pocket watch sort of perfectly reasonable without being exciting um few scuffs little hair crack estimate three to four hundred and then we have this lovely dinky little thing um, it looks to be in pretty good condition. That's in at 150 to 200. So there we go. Some interesting watches for you. Some interesting jewellery. There are less expensive things in here. You could have a go at a lot like this. Lot 827. You'd get a coral bead brooch on a base metal mount. You'd get a Marquisite deer and a Marquisite spider and a pair of earrings for potentially for 50 to 70 pounds. So what's not to like? So there we go. All sorts of good smalls. Uh, so, um, yes, come along and see us. People are, you know, it's safe to do so, reasonably anyway. And a uh, good lot of pictures to look at, all sorts of other items to uh, enjoy pouring over and deciding whether you want to waste your money on them or not. Uh, we'll go over the warehouse and have a quick look anyway, so uh, I'll see you over there. Do not adjust your set. Here we are, back again in the warehouse under the new bright lights. And look at this, zinging colours here. We've got a pair of these uh, sort of 70s style, um, probably are period 70s by looks of them, uh, revolving chairs here, lot 95. Next to it, wow, look at the zing on that. There's a bright lemon lot 64 sofa. More traditional fare elsewhere, but not close to hand. We have this sort of deco style extending dining table and chairs, lot 65. I haven't got estimates on them at the moment. The boys have got to go around with their stickers. So it's all on the website. You can look it up and see what we are quoting. Uh, carrying on, well as ever, we've got some pine, things like this pine. Um, sort of washstand dressing chest here. That is lot number 100. I can't remember, I know I've seen that in the house somewhere that it's come in since. You know, probably an estimate about 80 to 120, something like that. There is, we immediately feel for weight, a cast metal Victorian style garden bench here, lot 91. It's got a good look to it. We haven't got to pay the cost of the cast iron ones. So in many respects, quite a good buy really, because how many of us actually sit on these benches they tend to go in the corner of the garden and get covered in lichen and moss and what have you and be be there as ornaments so so perhaps consider buying them alloy one as a, as a better bet there we go a little tip there perhaps but further on well we've still got these pilasters i'm not too surprised look at the height of them and um you know if you've got the right place they'd be great but uh, you do need the right place to buy lot 108 uh, further on well i'm seeing a nice sort of anglo-indian looking table there that's a circular occasional table it's got that look of of sort of around about 1830 1840 india sort of a, a, a european english style but made by an indian craftsman and carved with a sort of nice foliate motifs and what have you that's lot 50 i quite like that there's two quite smart desks beyond it um differing styles sort of 1920s 30s oak by the looks of things and then a, 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 alongside it a sort of more traditional style of mahogany example. Um, more, uh, this one is cast iron. This is a, a sort of flower trough planter, lot 88. We've got this lovely big bin here. Um, what can you put in there? My wife's chickens could go in there, I think. <laughs> uh, lot 113, whatever you want to put in there. Chickens are otherwise, it's, uh, they won't be getting out in a hurry. You can padlock it. Uh, and then down the end, some great big washing great wardrobes. Look at that, you could move into that lot. 118, um, lots of uh, wardrobe for your money. There's a big old barn, iron fire grate here. There's one of these roll top timbered desks by standard. There's all sorts of things. There's big white bears, there's garden urns. You know, it's all here as ever. So uh, come along, have a look around the warehouse, have a look around the maid cell room, see what you think of it all. And uh, it's we're, we're viewing as ever, the Friday, the Saturday till one o'clock, and then on the morning of the sale. Thank you very much.